Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Ultimate Rush Playlist Challenge. So what exactly is the Ultimate Rush Playlist Challenge? Well, we've, we've put together a star-studded panel here of a handful of, uh, I guess, folks that run Rush pages uh, on the internet, and we'll introduce everyone momentarily. Um, but the Ultimate Playlist Challenge is uh, we have uh, – four teams of two and each team has devised 15 rush songs um, into a what we deem an ultimate rush playlist and then we are going to let uh, followers of multiple of our pages vote on which one they think is the best or which one they like the most and we're going to have ultimately an ultimate rush playlist um, so let's introduce uh, the group, my backup band. My backup band. Okay, so uh, top left and uh, middle left, we have uh, John from CygnusX1.net and Ed from Rush is a band. And they are what we are deeming the blue team just for ease of color coordinating this. Uh, the top middle and the middle boxes, myself, Ryan, and Jim, we are from Rush fans. We are uh, the red team. At the bottom, we have Julianne and Adam. They are the green team. They are from the Rush Discuss uh, podcast. And top right and middle right, we have Melanie from Rush Girls Rock on Instagram, and we have Jerry representing the Something for Nothing, uh, a Rush fan cast podcast. Uh, I do think now is probably a good time to publicly and I guess personally thank John and Ed for all the work you guys have done over the years with your two websites. I mean, you guys are the, yes. the original. Uh, so thank you very much for everything yes. you guys do. Um, yes. So, uh, yes, requirements or guidelines or some structure or the laws. <laughs> yes. For this playlist. So we didn't want to just have the ultimate rush playlist be a bunch of hit songs, right? We're not trying to create a greatest hits album here. Rush has a bunch of greatest hits, right? But they also have a bunch of epics, a bunch of instrumentals uh, and quite a few deep cuts. So the requirements, if you will, each team, or each playlist should have up to three of what we deem the big 10, which are greatest hits, I guess, for the sake of this. Those are Working Man, Fly By Night, Closer to the Heart, Spirit of Radio, Free Will, Tom Sawyer, Red Barchetta, Limelight, Subdivisions, and New World Man. These are excluding instrumentals and epics. And you understand that, why we did that, because you can choose up to uh, two epics, which is anything over 10 minutes long. The Necromancer, The Fountain of Lamb Neth, 2112, Xanadu, Cygnus X1, Book 1, The Voyage, Cygnus X1, Book 2, Hemispheres, or The Camera Eye. And you can choose up to one instrumental. La Villa Strangiato, YYZ, Where's My Thing, Leave That Thing Alone, Limbo, The Main Monkey Business, Hope, or Malignant Narcissism. And the rest of your playlist can be filled out with anything other than songs from those three categories, um, whether it be, uh, you know, studio live or anything from feedback. Uh, and any of these versions can be live for, for any of the categories, but you can only have uh, the song regardless of what version it is on the playlist once. Uh, so without further ado, we are going to let John and Ed uh, reveal their playlist and their reasons why. Go ahead. Okay. Um, get right into it. Number one, uh, Working Man. Number two, Bastille Day. Number three, 2112. Number four, A Farewell to Kings. Uh, number five, Cygnus X1, Book Two, Hemispheres. Uh, number six, Natural Science. Seven, Red Barchetta, uh, eight, YYZ, and we picked the live version off of Russian Rio for this. 
And for number nine, subdivisions. Number 10, uh, distant early warning. Number 11, time stand still. Number 12, the pass. Number 13, bravado. Uh, number 14, far cry. And uh, number 15, the garden. And that's it. Awesome stuff. I like that it's in uh, chronological, chronological order. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is. I thought that was important just to kind of uh, uh, convey just how the band progressed over the years. So that's kind of why we did it that way. Yeah. Cool. Any reasons for leaving off? Well, I guess other than um, 15 songs only, but Fly By Night. What else? Fly by night. Uh, uh, oh, album wise, album we wise, left yeah. off. Tom Tess Echo and Tess Echo and Vapor Trails. Tess Echo. Yeah. Tom Sawyer. We decided was so ubiquitous, and everyone has probably heard it a million times that it didn't need to be there. But um, and a lot of it had to do with just the limitations on the, on the list and everything. So we really love John. I really love Red Bar Chatter. John, go ahead. You got something to add? Sorry, just getting myself yeah. up. Yeah, just as Ed indicated, uh, we both love Red Barchetta. I think it's like the epitome of a Rush song. Musically, lyrically, it, it kind of checks all the boxes. So it was an easy decision to pick that over Tom Sawyer. Not that Tom Sawyer is a bad song, but yeah, it's overdone. Everyone's heard of it, so let's go with something different. And I, I do feel that Red Barchetta is the height of moving pictures, in my opinion. Yeah. Think about this as, as a playlist for someone who may not, who maybe likes rock, but is not familiar with Rush. And go, kind of going at it from that perspective. Um, yeah. Even someone who probably doesn't, isn't a huge Rush fan, but likes rock music, will have heard Tom Sawyer. So I, you know, um, I don't know what else was, it was, a, first off, this was tough as hell to do because, <laughs> Oh yeah, you can't you can't represent all, all the albums because there are more than fifteen albums, obviously. Right, right. So uh, Test for Echo, we left off. Um, Test for Echo. Yeah, both of us. I think me especially. I mean, that's my least favorite Rush album. What do you have to say, John? Oh, uh, it hurts. You know, it, it's tough because, uh, and Ed and I were joking that ask us 15 minutes later, we're going to come up with 15 different songs. It, it's hard to really nail it down. And I personally love Vapor Trails and Test for Echoes. I think there's a, a lot of good songs there. But when you have to whittle it down to 15, you know, some things are going to make the cut, some aren't. But I, I think we're both really happy with the uh, the ultimate list that we came up with. It's I, I, I think y'all's list is a, is a really nice progression. It, and it really has a variety, right? You have like a song like Natural Science and you also have something a little bit more like would be put on pop, I don't wanna say pop radio, but you know, like Time Stand Still, right? It's probably more accessible to the masses, let's put it that way. So yeah, really, I think it's a nice variety there. Yeah, yeah it, for, for um, I'm just thinking of things as I, as I think of stuff here, just an early warning. We, prob we probably named like four or five songs off of Grace Under Pressure that we could have put there. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. That's a good representation. Absolutely. I that could have picked up. Uh oh, John cut out. Yeah, I think he said he could have picked all of them. Sustain, I would have picked the whole album, Grace Under Pressure. That happens to be one. That was the album that got me into Rush. So it's hard for me to sway along, away from that album, but uh, yeah, Distant Early Warnings is another great song to just like that selection, so. Yeah. But that's the point, it's a yeah. nice progression. It's not just all heavy songs, you know, you look at songs like the Pass and Bravado, which build up over time, you know, it really highlights different aspects of Rush and their career over the years. Yeah, um, I like, I kind of like how we bookend it. With, you start out with Working Man, which is a song that kind of broke them in, in the US, and then end with The Garden, which is the final track on the final album. Um, I, 
So that, I think that works well. And um, we really like that. We thought we should include a live, a live, uh, a live version of a song. And it, we felt that, that that Russian Rio YYZ performance is, is one of my favorites. And really that, that audience was huge and they were so into that song and you can just kind of, you don't have to even watch the video. You can kind of feel it when you listen to that. Sure. Um, yeah, we, like I said, we, we could have, we could have given you like a million different playlists every other day. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's For sure. Awesome. Help exercise. Yeah. All right. Well, Jim, that's going to be tough to beat, uh, but right. uh, we're going to try. try. So, yeah, we're <laughs> going to try it. So uh, I'm going to read it here and I'm going to give some reasons. And then I'm going to turn it over to Jim to add whatever he wants. So uh, from the topping, no stopping, uh, the spirit of radio, anthem, far cry, lakeside park, Xanadu live from exit stage left. Tom Sawyer, Between the Wheels, Natural Science, 2112, Spin Drift, Animate, Marathon, Subdivisions, La Villa Strangiato, and Headlong Flight. So, our thinking from my handy dandy notebook here, uh, <laughs> we... The first thing Jim and I did was we decided what albums, because of the limitations, we should exclude, I guess, right? So we decided we were going to exclude uh, Test for Echo, that Aggressive, that it, all these, all of them hurt, really. Okay. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all of them, all of them hurt. But Test for Echo, Caress of Steel, Vapor Trails, Presto. Oh, no, no, not Caress and, of Steel. We got well, Lexine. Well, I know, but originally, okay. origi we'll, originally get, we'll get back sure. to that. Yeah. So uh, okay. this was this was step one. Exclude Test for Echo, Caress of Steel, Vapor Trails, Presto, and maybe Roll the Bones. And we ended up excluding Roll the Bones completely. So um, the next thing we both decided on was we uh, both believe the Spirit of Radio is the ultimate Rush opener. So we figured we had to open our ultimate Rush playlist with the Spirit of Radio. Uh, we both agreed that La Villa Strangiato is the ultimate Rush instrumental. So we had to have La Villa Strangiato on our list. Uh, we then thought that we had to have something from the de debut album. So we considered Working Man. Um, however, after much deliberation, we decided that Headlong Flight was going to, well, okay, Working Man towards the later years was generally played in the encore, right? And, oh, well, throughout their career it was kind of an encore song so we thought yeah. it would serve a good ending for this uh but we decided because working man was one of the big 10 we didn't want to use that we wanted to use three other songs so we thought headlong flight was kind of like what john and ed did with the whole bookend thing but we thought headlong flight was a good parallel to working man uh, you know a seven or eight minute track it's jerry's been quoted i i think saying that headlong flight has everything in a rush song that makes rush great you know so i would agree with that um and we thought that it would be a nice way to round it out with the whole you know live it all again type thing um it is the ultimate jam song too i think uh then the grace under pressure talk that john and ed uh you said you could put everything on uh, from grace under pressure we kind of agreed we yep. debated between distant early warning red sector and between the wheels of course it's probably the three most popular songs from that album um those were the three we were those were yeah uh, yeah yeah so they're, they're the way so jim great. and i what we did was uh we said i said jim what's your favorite he said distant early warning jim said ryan what's your favorite i said between the wheels so that eliminated red sector a from the group and then we did a, then we did a little hand over fist and yeah. uh <laughs> and i won that so between the yep. wheels made the list um, there we go <laughs> We wanted to have Animate and Far Cry on here. We, as we felt, those are the two best tracks post 1990. Plain and simple. Um, we considered Time Stand Still to have some Hold Your Fire representation, um, and we also considered losing it as a cool down song, uh, but ultimately eliminated, eliminated them. And then the last thing we did a little fun, a little fun idea that Jim and I did was we each chose three deep cuts i mean whatever you want to 
consider a deep cut, but three deep cuts. And we let the other person pick one deep cut from that group of three to end up on the list. So I picked how it is armor and sword and ghost rider. More on that in a second. Jim, what were your three that you, you had? I had uh, Lakeside Park, Driven, and Prime Mover. Okay, so I elected to have Lakeside Park. I chose Lakeside Park mm -hmm. from Jim's group. Right. Um, from my group, Jim chose Ghost Rider. Mm -hmm. After listening to the playlist through a couple times, I texted Jim. I was like, hey, I don't think Ghost Rider really fits after 2112, and I don't really know where else we could put it. Um, so we elected to go with spin drift because it's heavy and we thought it was a, a nice little, uh, you know, song, uh, well, not, not little, but it's a long song, <laughs> but, um, a nice song to go after 2112. Yeah. Um, cause that's kind of where the playlist we felt shifts. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, there's one more thing I wanted to add and, and then Jim, you can, uh, pop in here. I, I always thought that, um, um, from time machine, the time machine set list the first set and i said this a few times on, on rush roundtable but the the first set ended with free will marathon subdivisions and i thought that was just a phenomenal grouping of three songs back to back to back for whatever reason uh unfortunately we didn't put free will but we went animate marathon subdivisions and we feel that that flowed really nicely as well um jim maybe you talk about the three hits we we uh we picked and why we picked those oh the spirit of radio tom sawyer and what was the other hit and uh subdivisions, subdivisions yeah well spirit of radio i i think i think ryan kind of covered that it's it's just a perfect rush it's a perfect rush opener and and i've seen them open many concerts with spirit of radio and it is it just kind of gets the crowd going it's it's awesome tom sawyer um while there are i think every song on moving pictures is is fantastic just listening, and and I think Ed, you mentioned that Tom Sawyer has been, you know, played a lot. You know, it's, it's played a lot live and played a lot on the radio. But just listening to the song, it is act, it is really an amazing song, with the amazing parts from from the three from the three musicians. And as a drummer, of course, I love Neil's Neil's fills that he does there. Um, and then subdivisions is. Well, another another fantastic song, and th that's just one that that has a lot of energy, especially towards the end. And and I think, at least in in, in my age group, <laughs> the old man age group, um, we and maybe other people too really relate to that to that song. Kind of thinking back, you know, to when you were in like junior high or middle school, like just that seventh eighth grade, even ninth yes. grade. This old guy. Yeah. Who's yeah. And it, you know, it, it kind of really fits and you, you feel that you're, you're that way. And I think a lot of, a lot of fans relate to that. Um, and I've also read that, that Getty has mentioned that that song was just meant to play live. So it's just one of those that kind of felt had to be it. Yeah, I would second that. I, well, I think it was Ed that said it about Red Barchetta. It's like, got ever oh, another, yeah. another song that kind of has everything yeah because of the, the the limitations and the you know of the requirements and and the, and the laws of this uh we felt ultimate rush couldn't exclude tom sawyer so we had to have tom sawyer on the list um jim's favorite <laughs> version of xanadu is exit stage left yes. so we, and i i would second that well now with the moving we the... did this before we did this before the moving pictures 40th came out so we could maybe interchange that, but anyways, uh, and then the last thing I was just going to add was uh, subdivisions. I mean, uh, every Rush fan can relate to the lyrical content of the song, so we felt that that had to be one of the three hits as well. So um, a good a good mix of, you know, popular-ish tracks and, you know, a couple deep cuts, so we think this is a, a ultimate Rush playlist that could serve for you know, the casual new fan or even the hardcore fan, uh, and it, it kind of fits, kind of checks all boxes. So, uh, that's it. Vote for us. All right. Uh, we're going to turn, <laughs> turn it over to, uh, Julianne and, uh, Adam down there, the, what, green team? Rush Discuss. Go ahead. 
without any context, which is really hard. I will read our list. All right. Starting with Available Light, Middletown Dreams, Sweet Miracle, Working Them Angels, Time Stand Still, Between the Wheels, Hope, Entree New, How It Is, Madrigal, Open Secrets, Losing It, Bravado, Marathon, Fountain of Lamneth. Let Adam explain. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah. Fountain of Lamneth. Oh yeah, it's such a great, great piece of music, but the so when we started this, we're like, it'd be like you guys already talked about, you know, pick a day and the playlist could be different. And um, so we're like, okay, let's go with something that's a little bit more personal and something that maybe has like a narrative structure to it. And so we thought it'd be kind of cool to kind of use our own life over the past couple of years. Um, and just like the changes that we've gone through and then think of it like we were um, assembling a jukebox musical um, and, and, how, and how that would look because we feel like Rush is so... Human. Exactly, it's so human. It's like, and that's some, some everyone can relate to these lyrics. And so, and these songs we really feel like, I mean, they're all, excellent but then I think um, giving a little bit of a narrative structure makes it easier for people who might not normally listen to Rush they're like okay well if there's a story that goes along and and then that's how you can hook some people um, and so the idea with available light starting it off it's almost like a prologue like setting forth this is kind of the the motivating the, the motivation for the characters through throughout this story and they're looking for answers in life. They're looking to gather in all the light that they can. And then, you know, it fades out and then boom, you're just hit in the face with the start of Middletown Dreams um, and kind of, and so then the first um, few are kind of setting that groundwork for dissatisfaction, just like looking for a change in your life. And then, you know, with the end of Sweet Miracle going into working them angels, you've kind of set upon this new path that you want to do. And then you kind of get into the flow of things with working them angels. And then you hit a sweet spot and you just want it all to pause with time stand still. And then reality rears its ugly head again and you got between the wheels and you just think, um, it feels like everything's kind of falling apart. And then you get hope is kind of like the intermission song, just kind of with that, um, you know, things are going to get better, just so that little reprieve. And then the and then act two is exploring the relationships um, that come with with these big life changes. And so Entree News, I think one of the most perfect relationship songs. Um, and then you get kind of that that feeling of of a rut when you get into a long term relationship with how it is. You just kind of feel like, well, this is just this is how it's going to be. And then, um, and then Madrigal was kind of like, so we had a couple um, spots where um, Julianne and I were having to do long distance for a few months. And so Madrigal really encapsulates that feeling when you're, when you have to be apart, but you're able to, um, you're able to be a strength to each other, even though you are apart. And then Open Secrets, yet again, just a perfect relationship song um, gets to those, those things that we don't necessarily want to say all the time, but we definitely feel them and it's definitely important to, to talk about. And then in the final, you know, you always have to have that final sniff of death right before the end. And that's where losing it comes in, where you feel like all your best laid plans today just go away. They're just ripped out from you. And then bravado is the answer to that of having, um, being able to move forward. And even though everything falls apart, if, if you at least have love and if you at least um, are moving forward with, with that hope, then, then did you really lose everything? And then marathon is kind of that sum up of act two of 
you just got to keep going with persistence. And then Fountain of Lemneth re just it encapsulates everything. It just kind of goes over all the all the stated themes and just um, really stresses the the whole journey of life. And so, um, and then also, so since Available Light is the prologue and Fountain of Lemneth is the um, kind of epilogue, we thought it was kind of cool to bookend with two tracks from Power Windows and the meat of the story with Middletown Dreams and marathon um, so that was kind of our thinking behind that just kind of making um, a story that you can listen to using rush um, and then someone who maybe is more driven by a narrative structure they can sneakily be be introduced with um, all the musical stylings of rush yeah there's definitely a different style of ultimate playlist rush i suppose um, and it was actually a really cool personal experience for us to build this playlist and like relate it to our life and how many times have we done that with Rush songs through the years where it's either an album that just is our album for a while while we're going through something or it's a song. Um, and so it was really, really a cool exercise, but then to highlight like this incredible band that you can do that with, like find all of these songs that can speak to you in different parts of your life. And so to us, that was the ultimate brush playlist. And it was super fun to be able to do, so. All I know is that I'm gonna steal the sniff of death as my autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. I have, yeah. I have two comments. Um, the first is when I first saw this about 15 minutes before we started recording, because we kind of, we, we didn't share our playlists until, you know, right before. Um, I looked at the three of ours, or our, our blue team, red team, and, and yellow team. Okay, and you know Jerry and and Melanie will get will get to theirs. But I looked at those three, and then I looked at yours. I'm like, all right, is this like the ultimate deep cut? Like, really? <laughs> and then, I know. I realized we didn't even have one of like the popular ones, and I was like, oh. Yeah, and and um, <laughs> but not. I mean, nothing from the '70s except Fountain. I mean, you, you did such a fantastic. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, I yeah. love the, I love the 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 story behind it, and like this, yeah, like yeah. how you constructed this, like to your own personal life. I mean, it's like your personal Rush playlist, and <laughs> I think, I think fans probably will vote for that on <laughs> ap appreciating that alone. No, I mean, really, um, that's very cool. Of really course, they nice. probably have to have the context. So hopefully yeah. they're watching the video. But um, then the second thing I wanted to say was, uh, you know, it must be nice to be able to sit at the kitchen table next to each other and do this. You, you have a <laughs> significant, a significant <laughs> advantage. Yeah, yeah <laughs> we true. felt pretty spoiled about that. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, this is, this so, is a this is cool. I, I, yeah. And I, I, I agree with Ryan. I really like the story. And like, you know, some of the songs like Available Light and Entree New, Open Secrets, then Fountain. I mean, those are just, I, I think they are amazing songs that don't, don't necessarily get a lot of recognition or people don't give them a chance, especially Fountain. I think people sort of shun that album. Yeah. You know, yeah. and... I, I, I'm really happy to see to see songs like that and so, representation from Caressa Steele. I yeah. know. Actually, I made that joke. I was like, "We're being crazy. We're finishing on Caressa Steele." Right. So. Uh, I'm a little. <laughs> I'm great. only slightly disappointed that you didn't include the color of right because that's what your opening track for your. For your podcast. Yeah. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, that's were... how it is. Which is closer, right? <laughs> Oh, yeah. There was definitely a song that we were, were like really wanting to get into, like subdivisions, because that was a song that we played. Like when we first moved to Idaho, that was a song that we played together to kind of get some normalcy. Really but we're like, eh, it just doesn't fit with the other songs and and the flow of what we're trying to tell. And so it was tough to yeah. <laughs> to self impose even more restrictions on ourselves, but. Um, it was fun though. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It's cool. I thought the only that ours would be the only playlist without Tom Sawyer, but so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you dig deeper Love and go it. for ours. <laughs> yeah, there I you like go. That. 
I like how the instructions were, you know, up to three of these, you know, in this category, and they were like, zero's up to three. That's true. That's, true. That's why we made it up to, yeah. They did not, they did not break any rules. They nope. followed all, right. all the yep. rules. Yep, 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 100%. Awesome job, guys. It's really, really, really good creativity. Yeah, I love great. it. Um, all right, so yellow team, Melanie and Jerry, go ahead. Okay, I'm going to read the list, and then Jerry's going to give you our – strategy behind everything that we picked. I'm going to restart with the deep cut, Tom Sawyer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, subdivisions, Free Will, Xanadu, The Camera Eye, YYZ, Far Cry, Dreamline, Available Light, Stick It Out, Headlong Flight, Distant Early Warning, The Stars Look Down, Middletown Dreams, an analog kid. Solid. So here's what we did, right? Ready? We applied uh, heuristic methodology. <laughs> Took Jerry's hat and just put a bunch of songs in there. And, just... <laughs> and engaged with our learnings from cumulative decades of field work and leveraged those learnings against the aforementioned heuristic approach to arrive at our list, which means- it Sounds hard. We just chose the songs we liked. We just chose the songs we liked. And that's really all it was. I feel kind of embarrassed after all of these, um, you know, explanations. Wow. But we just said, hey, what's oh, the first right. song? And Millie's like, why don't we put Tom Sawyer? And I said, done. <laughs> and I said, I love subdivisions. Done. We were, uh, we were, it took us like 10 minutes. Because we were like, this is the greatest, this is the greatest playlist ever. Because it's just songs we love. <laughs> I love how I love how you took the requirements, which was which the requirements were literally the Big Ten, the hits, the epics, and the instrumentals. And on your playlist, you have the the first three are the of the Big Ten, <laughs> the next the next two are the epics, and then the then the yeah. <laughs> we were like yeah, and you know I mean it comes out I think it comes it out works. in great order. Available lights right in the middle, so you get a little uh, you know get to calm down a little bit, and then kicks off to the yeah. end. I wish you know we had some kind of life changing life affirming <laughs> reasons <laughs> but we just i think we were both busy and that's that was the life affirming <laughs> reason <laughs> yeah so we just really love these songs so that's why they're on here well some great songs wow stick it out with we'll rush you can do that light. yeah you, yeah you can, right yeah. we yeah. just really like these 15 songs so let's yeah, yeah. well and it's Words. cool that you got stick it out and headlong flighter together because they're both pretty heavy yeah, pretty heavy tunes. I, I wish yeah. I could say that was on purpose. Right. <laughs> it was literally. But it, it I like was. this song. It was. It was accidentally on purpose. How's that? Yeah, there was like you pick one, and then okay, well now you pick one. All right, what do you like? <laughs> <laughs> and then Jerry's like, I gotta go, and that was the list. <laughs> yeah. That's go. why I think I think uh, our you know, no thought, thoughtfulness, is definitely gonna get us all of the votes you think you think the that's chaos. the winner that's yep the, it's yeah. a very very buddhist approach but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Making so a rush zen. playlist zen approach <laughs> love it a structured chaos see but the best thing about this is we're all winners because now we get to listen to each other's playlists <laughs> this is true <laughs> yes very true yeah Not and and man. that's a that's a very nice uh segue adam thank segue. you for that so um <clears throat> i think how we're going to do this is, um, assuming you're watching this, this is going to go live, I believe, on a Tuesday. Uh, it's probably a Tuesday you're watching this. Um, so we're going to give it a day or two, and then we're going to let, we're going to put all four of our playlists, you know, in a nice graphic, and we're going to share it out with uh, some polling options in the Cygnus X1 Facebook group. Um, uh, Ed is going to share it out uh, on Rushes a Band Twitter. Melanie's going to share it out in her Instagram story, uh, rush.girls.rock on um, her account. And then we on Rush fans are going to share it out on both uh, the poll on both YouTube and on our Instagram story. For So there's five different places you can vote. If you want to vote on all those locations, have at it. That's, you know, there's nothing we can do to stop you anyways. So um, <laughs> if you want to vote from all your burner accounts and all your email accounts because you really like one of them or you really like 
you know, Jerry and Melanie's uh, put all the songs in a hat approach or, you know, uh, Julianne and Adam's uh, story, you know, what, however you want to, however you want to vote for it. Um, and then at the end of this, one of these is going to win. So a little friendly competition between the, the four teams here. Um, and we're going to have an ultimate rush playlist at the end of this. Uh, but I guess in the meantime, feel free to make all the playlists, you know, in iTunes or Spotify or wherever and, and, and listen to them, see which ones you like the most and vote for them um, in a few days. And, uh, and, you know, feel free to, to take the, take the criteria yourself and put your own ultimate rush playlist in the comments and, you know, we'll comment along and, and, you know, feel free to con continue this. So, um, John, Ed, Jim, Melanie, Jerry, Julian, and Adam, thank you all for joining me and doing this. This was so much fun. Um, the last month put together playlists and well, Melanie and Jerry, probably the last 10 minutes putting together these playlists. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was Thursday. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh. Three days. Yeah. Okay. It's a long time uh, ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, fantastic time. And we hope everyone enjoyed this exercise and, uh, yeah, soon we'll have the ultimate rush playlist and uh, see where it goes. So thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone, for watching. And we'll see you on our channel sometime soon. Take care. Thanks, all.